we are in a final countdown. And that countdown has to do with a couple of things, the Tribulation and the Antichrist and Billy Crone. Pastor Billy Crone is with us today to talk about the Tribulation and the Antichrist and the countdown that's going on right now. You've got a new book, Billy. Let's talk about yeah. it. Yeah, well, uh, I'd love to, Gary. There's so much going on and we're excited to be able to get this resource out uh, because, boy, I tell you what, we don't know the day nor the hour, but things are ramping up uh, to a head and we need to get prepared. The title of the book, The Final Countdown, Tribulation Rising, The Jewish People and the Antichrist. Now that's a long title, but it really is a small, very highly focused subject. In mm -hmm. other words, what's in this book beams right in on a very specific aspect of Bible prophecy. Yeah. Yeah, it does, Gary. And of course, yeah, it's a long title, but it's uh, the one of many to come, Lord willing, if we're still alive and still here. Uh, but you're right, we, it's a laser beam on specifically the Jewish people and the interplay the Scripture talks about with the Antichrist. And uh, 20 studies, uh, 20 hours on the DVDs, mm -hmm. uh, 20 chapters in the book, but it's all current information, all that's going on in the news right now, hot off the press, uh, dealing with the Jewish people and how God uses them, frankly, as a centerpiece uh, to let us know that we're getting close. How do you know your last days? Man, I'll tell you what, Gary, one of the biggest signs God's given us in the Scripture, Old and New Testament, is concerning the Jewish people. And so we went down deep and tried to pr uh, produce an exhaustive study mm -hmm. with current information showing people that, hey, again, we can't be date setters, we don't know the date or the hour, but man, you take a look at what's going on right now in the news. If you're paying attention, most people unfortunately aren't. But if you're paying attention, what's going on with the Jewish people, even with our current administration, Gary, Time is running out. <laughs> now, that's a, a great point to, to stop on and focus in on <clears throat> what's going on with the Jewish people. Usually when we think of the Middle East, what do we think of? Uh, Syria, we think of Hezbollah, rockets aimed at Israel. We think of Iran, you know, death to America, death to Israel. Uh, we think of the Saudis, how do, how do they play into this whole thing? We think of the Russians, of course. We think of uh, all of Israel's enemies. We think of, of, uh, of geopolitics. That's not what your book is really about. No. Your book is about a spiritual event that's taking place in Israel right now. And I was amazed when I read, read your book. Let's, let's uh, kind of fill people in on what, what's actually happening sort of behind the scenes in Israel right now. Yeah. Well, you know, certainly we, uh, we, we deal with uh, the past prophecies that God said would happen to the Jewish people leading up to their dispersion and things of that nature. And again, the premises, if He gets those right, which He did, and we know that historically, then the future prophecies concerning the Jewish people uh, he's going to get right too, and he does. And we deal with at least 16 future prophecies concerning the Jewish people that frankly, Gary, uh, are unfolding before our very eyes. Uh, and of course the big watershed moment of course is when they became a nation, but they didn't just become a nation as was prophesied in the Old Testament, they became a nation in one day. They became a united nation. We even deal with current information, the actual news clips, the so-called lost tribes of Israel mm -hmm. are coming back to Israel in droves uh, as the Scripture says. Uh, uh, we the, suppose the lost tribe of Manasseh, they're coming back. It's just all this stuff. But then we start getting into uh, even more recent events. The Scripture talks about in the last days how in Zechariah that Israel will become a, uh, a burdensome stone. They become a, a cup of trembling uh, and just this, this basically a source of world conflict. And Israel right now uh, is you could fit 20 and a half Israels in the one state of California. It's just a teeny tiny piece of real estate. Mm -hmm. But you look at just that one prophecy, Gary, and what's going on in the news right now. Um, it, you, you say a, a source of conflict for the whole world? I mean, you'd expect that from if God said, well, Russia is going to do it, or no, China is going to do it, or the United States. No. A, a place, a tiny piece of real estate on the planet that's so small, 20 and a half of them could fit in California. And every, the whole world is in an uproar? Absolutely. That's actually what's going on in the news today uh, with Israel. And there's a multitude of reasons why there's that conflict. There's a religious conflict that's going on over there with the three monotheistic religions being headquartered over there in Jerusalem. Mm -hmm. That certainly adds to it. There's a whole resource issue. Right now Israel is finding 
amazing resources uh, never before. It's just within recent events, major gas fields, oil fields. Israel, on top of that, has so much water because of their technology that's advancing. They're exporting 20% more water than they actually need. They're exporting mm. water. And, uh, you know, and so, and all these are things that are like, man, people want to get their hands on it. We even did a study on the Dead Sea. The Dead Sea, that's a myth. It's not dead. There's so much mineral wealth in the Dead Sea that a lot of countries want to get their hands on it. Okay, and so we're going like, man, so, so we got Israel, it's a, source, it's a religious conflict, you got resources conflict, people want to come over and take control of Israel because they want to get their hand on these amazing resources. It's a geopolitical center that if you want to go from the south up north, you got to go through Israel and vice versa, north to south, you got all that. But even with the current uh, um, administration, with uh, President Trump, his decision to move the U.S. embassy uh, from Tel Aviv to Jerusalem, in effect acknowledging Jerusalem, Israel's capital, which it has been for 3,000 years, he's the first president ever to do it. Uh, and, and it's created a major conflict. Uh, the whole world is in an uproar over that decision. This is just current events. In fact, you listen to the Jewish people, and we document this thoroughly, they believe that our president, President Donald Trump, it's not by chance that he came to rise. Uh, he is there, they believe, and this is their words, Gary, he is put there by the hand of God. And not just for the American people, they really believe that he is there to be a support and an aid for the Jewish people. It's all current news, all going on right now, and we bring it out in that resource. Now, this brings up something that I found very, very interesting about your book. You go into great detail about the modern priesthood in yeah. Israel. Uh, most people don't even hear about it or, yeah. or think about it. What they do think about is one day Israel's going to have a temple and there will be a priesthood, but that's someday. That's yeah. sort of far, far away. But the, no, you document <laughs> in your book that it's happening right now yeah. in a big way, yeah. and they believe that they are very, very close to the time of, that the temple will begin to function again, yeah. which amazes me because the temple's not there right now. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Well, what's going on? Well, and again, let, before we talk about how ready they are, and they, Gary, they are so close it's not even funny. But what temple are we talking about here? And this is why I try to keep drawing people back. It's not, okay, the Jewish people going to have a temple, a temple, okay, that's cool. No, we know prophetically, significantly, we all agree on this, mm -hmm. that next temple that the Jewish people build will be the actual temple that the actual Antichrist will go up into halfway into the seven-year tribulation and declare himself to be God. Yes. That's the temple we're talking about. Right. The point for you and I as the Christian is this, that event called the abomination of desolation takes place at the midway point of the seven-year tribulation. We leave prior to the seven-year tribulation with the rapture. We don't know the day nor the hour, but if we see them that close building this temple that the actual Antichrist will unfortunately go up into and commit the deed, how Man, it's got to be getting close. Yes. So when you want to know how close we're getting in the last days, we, again, we can't be date setters, but God gives us seasons. We know it's getting close. Is pay attention to the Jewish people and the temple. Now let's go into the temple. Okay. We were there just a couple months ago, Gary, and uh, you can see some photos there of me and the Temple Institute and things of that nature. We're on the Temple Mount all over the place there. And one thing that amazed me, of course, they won't let you take uh, personal pictures of the actual items that they have rebuilt there in the temple. You can get them online and we share them of course there. Now back up just a little bit because I want people to catch up with us. You talk very, very quickly. Yeah. <laughs> By the way, when he preaches, he preaches. But, <laughs> but one thing I don't want people to miss is that there is an institute. Yes. They are creating the articles needed for temple worship, including yeah. the garments and including the utensils for sacrifice. Yeah. So having said that, continue your story. No, that's good. Because, you know, the Temple Institute, that's one of them we went to. They're not the only one. There's also okay. Temple Mount Faithful uh -huh. uh, with Gershom Solomon. And, but there's several institutes there, but they're all got the one common thread. We want to build the temple and yeah. do what it takes now. But you're right, we were there, we saw with our own eyes, Gary, the, the, the table of showbread uh, for the temple. And this is not some knockoff, it's according to Old Testament standards, gold overlaid, the whole nine yards, copper labor, uh, the priest, uh, priestly garments, it's all hand woven according to Old Testament specifications. We saw it there exactly. Again, we share the photographs that they allow you to share on the line in the study. Uh, the, the high priest crown that they already have, mm -hmm. the jewel encrusted breastplate for the high priest, all that stuff is ready to go on and on. The golden menorah, millions of dollars spent to build that thing. It's, it's just wild. And, uh, but one thing that I noticed that we, we were able to take pictures, this was just in the gift shop. Because when you go into the Temple Institute, 
you got to go into these back rooms that you can't get access to without permission. Then you start to go through this tour of what they've already got accomplished. And but in the temple, and we show the pictures there uh, that I took. But in the 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 visitor center there, the gift shop, they clearly show like these wonderful, beautiful art pieces of art that you can buy and purchase. Uh, and it's like the old classic, you know, what the temple was like in the second temple period and, and things of that nature. And it was just awesome. And the smoke rising and all that stuff and the priesthood doing their thing and all that stuff. And then as you keep going, then all of a sudden you see a current depiction of the current temple mount. And you don't see the Dome of the Rock there. You don't see the Alaska Mosque. You see the new rebuilt one. And you see modern day people going in uh, towards the temple worshiping. Uh, and you basically see other ones where they say the temple is coming. And it's just wild when you're there in Jerusalem. And if you know where the, the location is, you got the Temple Mount here, and you go up these steps just right out there, and that's where the Temple Institute, it overlooks the Temple Mount from that direction. And it's just a very uh, wild scene to be a part of, knowing what temple you're talking about. That they're ready, they're excited, they're ready to go. They've got the articles basically all sitting there ready to go. And you're realizing that, wait a second, this isn't just a temple. Mm -hmm. It's the temple that's going to be in the seven-year tribulation. But I I will will share this, Gary. There is one item that they are not planning on um, rebuilding. And that's the Ark of the Covenant. And I'm not going to say, thus saith the Lord, but we we were able to show from two different sources from the rabbis over there Mm -hmm. that the reason why, and one of them is Rabbi Rickman, who's the director of the Temple Institute Mm -hmm. over there, who's building the other articles, Mm -hmm. they say that uh, the reason why is because there's no need. They believe they know the location of the Ark of the Covenant Mm -hmm. and underneath the Temple Mount and they, they, they say they know exactly where it's at and the only reason why they haven't brought it out now is because they're just waiting for basically permission to build the Temple but they all say but be assured that when that time comes we're bringing that baby out. And if you think the Jewish people and the rabbis are excited, and, and they are, uh, 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 and with great expectation to build this temple, can you imagine them bringing out the actual Ark of the Covenant? It would put them in such a fervor, nobody, and nothing will stop that from being built. Now, when we think of this period of time uh, as Christians, we, we're thinking of the, the rapture and followed by a time of increasing trouble, followed by the seven year tribulation. And we think of, of Daniel 9 uh, and Daniel chapter 9 uh, culminating in verse 27 talks about uh, the man who makes a covenant mm-hmm. with the leaders of Israel. <clears throat> and you're, I think you're thinking that this could happen fairly soon. In other words, all the pieces are in place now. Yeah. And they are thinking about it from an entirely different perspective. That is, to them, it would be a marvelous thing for Messiah to come. And you were telling me that they believe so so strongly that Messiah uh, is coming that that they have prepared garments and the necessary accoutrements to welcome him when he does come. Yeah. So we we have here a kind of a strange uh, confluence of two opposite ideas. Yeah. And and by the way, he he covers this in his book very well. Uh, it's a strange time to be alive. Yeah, yeah. Well, again, they, they are, you know, different rabbis have different uh, modes and reasoning and, and thought processes. They, they all agree that there needs to be a temple. Uh, they all believe that the temple is needed uh, not only to basically finalize the Jewish people uh, as a people, that you're, we're really not complete until we build the temple. Uh, but they also believe that this temple is what is going to bring peace to mankind and that uh, not just them but the whole planet needs to build this temple and, and things of that nature. And they're basically just awaiting permission to do it. And even in their own camp they have a couple different avenues of which they think that this could take place. Because some people said, well there's no way that the Jewish people are ever, ever, ever going to be able to build this temple because basically you're looking at World War III, right? With the, uh, the Dome of the Rock there, the Muslim community with al Aska Mosque. And well, there's, you have a group of the rabbis there who do believe that uh, those need to go. Some are even saying um, that, okay, well, we, with modern technology, we can just uh, uplift those things and move them to Mecca and 
Mm-hmm. We, they don't need to be destroyed, but this is our mountain and, and whatever. So obviously, which is not popular with the Muslim community, but that's one camp. Another camp, believe it or not, they're kind of going into this one world religion kind of mindset, if you can believe that. And they, they, their premise is, no, 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 we don't even need to do that. There's room enough there on the Temple Mount. Go ahead and leave the Dome of the Rock and the al Aska Mosque there. We don't need to create a World War III. There's still room for this new temple and quote, all people can worship there in tranquility. So there's options for them to get that temple back. And it's in the news right now. Now, I'm holding a show and tell which you brought. And, yeah. and uh, uh, we have here a silver coin and yeah. a gold coin. Yeah. And it's the silver coin says across the top, Cyrus Balfour Trump Declaration 1917-2017. Mm-hmm. And Billy, as I live and breathe, there is a picture of the of the Emperor Cyrus. Yeah. And uh, uh, placed against him is a, a profile of Donald Trump. Yeah. And it says Cyrus Balfour Trump Declaration. Now the, the gold coin has the very same thing. Uh, it has the Emperor Cyrus, Donald Trump. It has the Temple Menorah on the backside. It has a picture of the third temple, the yeah. rebuilt temple. So, so does this other coin. And again, when you mint a coin like this, it, it means something. Let's talk about what, what it really means in terms of what the Jews are thinking right now. Well, the Jewish people, again, and when you, this is wild, Gary, because, you know, uh, a lot of us would admit that it wasn't by chance that President Trump got into office and that uh, there was a spiritual battle going on, literally. And I would agree with that. And, uh, and, um, but the Jewish people even more so believe that, and this is their words, again, not mine, uh, they truly believe that our president, President Donald Trump, was put there by the hand of God. Uh, not only we see that with his support of Israel and, again, moving the embassy to Jerusalem, in effect, again, acknowledging Jerusalem as their capital, they are excited about that, believe you me. He's also one of the biggest supporters of Israel, frankly, in a long time, certainly from the previous administration, which was yeah. the Obama administration was the most anti-Israel, anti-Christian administration in the history of the United States. So to see a complete flip around is so fast, they're saying this had to be the hand of God. But it, as much as they're excited about the embassy move, Gary, I'm telling you, they are convinced that President Donald Trump is going to be the guy, like the Cyrus of the Old Testament, who is going to help them build this new temple. Now, part of it too is, not only because of his um, rise out of nowhere, um, uh, and that um, nobody expected him to win, demonstrating that, and the Scripture does teach that by the way, Daniel, uh, Proverbs, Romans 13, that uh, that God directs the, the heart of the king as a water course as he pleases. God raises him up, takes him down, there's no authority other than God. So we see that scripturally. But they believe that He's going to be the guy who's going to help him build the temple. That's why mm. his head there is side by side on these coins with Cyrus, who helped them build the previous temple uh, during their uh, post the exile period. And uh, to the point where they also, uh, again, on you see on those coins, on the flip side, if you don't get that message, on the back of both mm. of them, the silver shekel there and the gold coin, is the temple. Now, they also acknowledge that President Trump also, you look at his background. Now before he became president, what was he known for? He was a builder of, Bingo. of large buildings. Right. And, and, <laughs> and we quote the rabbis, Gary, they're not just saying he came for the hand of God. And by the way, the impression I get, they're saying our president was put there by the hand of God. And they're saying, really not so much for you guys, Americans? I mean, yeah, but it was really for us. Because this guy's going to come, he's going to come to our aid, he's going to help us build this temple. But again, the rabbis, we quote them, Gary, I kid you not, they're, they're basically throwing the challenge out to them. Uh, President Trump, we know that you like to build things. We know that you want to make your name for yourselves. Wouldn't this be the ultimate building project? This is the rabbis right now over there talking about our president. Talk about current events, hot off the press. It's wild. Hmm. You know, and again, I have to say, we're talking about uh, Billy's book, The Final Countdown. Tribulation Rising, Part One, and then at the, at the bottom of the page here it says the Jewish people and the Antichrist. Because sadly, and we talked about this before we came on today, uh, for them, the, preparing a temple for the Messiah is pure joy. Yeah. For us who have, have read and understand Bible prophecy, 
Uh, we know that the man of sin is going to stand up in the temple, yep. make a seven-year covenant with the people, and it will not go well no. after that. No. And our heart goes out, but we're living in that general time. And there's so much documentation that suggests that. Yeah. Well, and, and again, it's, it's the good news, bad news. You know, praise God, the Jewish people, their eyes finally get open to Jesus being the one and only true Messiah. But it comes at a horrible price. You know, Paul talks about Romans 11, that they're under a temporary hardness or blindness. Notice the key word there, temporary. And, uh, but one day their eyes are going to be open. And God uses the seven-year tribulation as that tool to open their eyes, uh, but also to bring forth the remnant, uh, the one-third Jewish remnant that will yes. survive the seven-year tribulation. But again, like he said, it comes at a, a, a horrible cost. You, you take a look at just that aspect of what Zechariah says after the abomination of desolation, the Antichrist, obviously the Jewish people aren't going to worship him as God, which is what he's demanding, Paul talks about. So the scripture alludes that two-thirds of them are going to perish. They're going to die. Gary, do the math on that. That's millions of Jewish people. If it was just in Jerusalem, if it's talking about the global Jews, and if it's a global aspect, it's even more. But still, you're talking basically another Jewish holocaust uh, is coming. And, and it is sad because they can't see it coming. But, but the Scripture says right now, unfortunately, there's a spiritual blindness. However, I will say this. Uh, one thing that we also drive uh, home for us as the Christian, we know, as you said, our hearts ache for them. It's like, oh man, if only you would know and they're not going to find out until the, in the seven year tribulation what's really going on and the ruse that's being played on them. But guess what, Gary? If you and I as a Christian, as Christian witness to them, anybody on the planet, but including, hello, the Jewish people, they don't have to be a part of the seven year tribulation. They can escape it just like you and I. Mm. And so this isn't for our own entertainment. Uh, it certainly should motivate us knowing that time is running out, but it should also motivate us also to share the gospel like never before, including the Jewish people. There is one way they can escape this Holocaust that we know is coming. And that is if they accept Jesus right now as their Messiah. You know there's a dichotomy in Israel right now. And we talked about this before we went on today. Uh, Israel is a holy place, very special to God. But along the coast of Israel today it's not very holy. Mm, uh, there yeah. are societies yeah. rearing their ugly heads uh, therein. For example Tel Aviv uh, has been called the, the number one uh, the homosexual capital of the world, yeah, uh, per capita, and, but that, it's not the only city, and, right. and the, there is uh, a, a kind of a spirit of uh, uh, what should I say of rebellion rising in Israel yeah. in in certain places. Right. At the very same time, these other things. What do people go to see when they go to Israel? They go to see the the place where God came and put his foot down on planet earth yeah. and the place where Jesus walked and the, the, temp, the holy temple and all of these things and yet there is this awful darkness rising in Israel even as we speak. Yeah. Well which is unfortunate because um, it is going on and we bring that in great detail. But it also helps us to understand and we bring this out that that tells you that the Jewish people right now even though God of course is not done with them we know that because of the, and we have a whole section on dealing with the eternal covenants, uh, the Abrahamic covenant, the Davidic covenant, the difference between the Mosaic covenant, which was conditional. But because of the unconditional covenants, God's not done with the Jewish people. Mm -hmm. So we know He's not done with them, but we also know that they're, they're not in a good spiritual position, and we know it's going to continue until their eyes get open in the seven year tribulation. Because what starts the seven year tribulation? They make a peace treaty, a covenant, with the actual Antichrist. They can't even see that coming. So we know they're not going to be in a good spiritual position. Again, Paul says Romans 11, their eyes are under temporary blindness. They're not seeing very well. And when you look at what's going on over there, much of the Jewish, uh, there, there is the religious rabbis and things of that nature, but a lot of them are very secular. Yeah. Um, and and uh, as crazy as it sounds, uh, Israel is uh, very liberal in a lot of its thinking, including on the issue of homosexuality. And, and what's interesting, and we bring this out, I remember years back, Gary, reading in Revelation 11, and uh, Israel, Jerusalem gets called out in the Scripture, and it says they're, uh, they're likened unto Egypt and Sodom. Right? It's talking about the account of the two witnesses there which die in Jerusalem, etc. And then we have that account. But I always remember reading like, whoa, well, man, of all names to be called out, Egypt, which in the Scripture typifies sin, mm -hmm. okay, and, but Sodom, we all know what Sodom is dealing with. Oh yeah. Right? 
but for God to call them that? And I'm going, could, is that really literally? And it is, Gary. Like he said, it's getting in yeah. such a bad spiritual state there that it, uh, Tel Aviv was voted the most gay-friendly city on the planet. Okay, and, and homosexuality, you think it's expanding here? It's over there. And, and like you said, it's sad. Instead of going to Israel to go and see where Jesus came at His first coming, and by the way, He's coming back at His second coming. He's going to rule and reign from there and all that stuff. And that, that's important. It's exciting to be there. You've been there. I've been there. It's just an amazing spiritual experience. You would think that that's why people are going there. Not anymore. Mm-hmm. They're in such a bad spiritual state right now that they're repitching themselves to basically, I mean, I live in Las Vegas. It's called Sin City, mm-hmm. and people come there because go come here and sin. And I don't agree with that, obviously, but that's the way it is. That's their tourism. Israel's kind of doing the same thing. They like, come are. on over here and party and drink and do it up and uh, pro homosexual. It, it, whoa! And yet the scripture two thousand years ago said, you know what kind of state they're going to be in? They're not only going to make a treaty with the Antichrist, but it's going to get so bad that I'm going to call them Egypt sin, and I'm going to call them Sodom. And Gary, it's happening right now. Well, we're running short on time. I feel like we have just barely scratched the surface of the topic <clears throat> in Billy's book, The Final Countdown, Tribulation Rising, Part 1. Uh, I also have a, uh, in my hand here a uh, DVD set. Uh, yeah. How does the DVD set relate to the book? Oh, uh, DVD, set, DVD set is it's 10 DVDs, 20 hours of teaching that the book is based upon. What you get with the DVD set as well is the video clips, Gary. There's well over, in just the 20 studies, there's well over 100 plus video clips. And I'm talking news clips straight from Jerusalem, all around the world, what's going on with the UN, what's going on with the different countries, their attitude and behavior towards the Jewish people, uh, and you'll get all that on the video. We're offering the book at prophecywatchers.com and uh, just go to the online bookstore, click there and you'll find Billy Crone's uh, name down there and you're going to find the offer. Uh, Trump, the Temple, and the Antichrist package. Books, DV, the book, the DVDs, and a bonus. We always throw little bonuses in. Billy has done a couple of presentations at our Blessed Hope Prophecy forums, and we'll include those. Entire package, the book $25, the DVD set $50, uh, but the package, all of, all of these items together, $75, free shipping anywhere in the United States, and again, including the two conference presentations done by Billy Crone. And uh, take it from me, he's a great preacher. Not only great, but you pack so much information into such a short time when you preach. It always amazes me. Well, it's just there's so much going on, Gary. You just try to get in as much as you can with what time you got, and you still feel like you've left some out. But that tells us the days we're in, doesn't it? it does. That things are ramping up, not just quickly, exponentially so, and it's not slowing down. You know, Billy, we have just barely scratched the surface. Come back and let's do another program. Sounds good. We've got to finish what we started here. Again, uh, the book, uh, a wonderful book. I have read the book, I promise you. I always read the books of uh, authors whom I interview because I want to be a little bit on uh, the informed side. It it always helps to do a better interview that way. But again, this book is, is a wonderful book. I'm Gary Stearman. We're going to be back with Billy again. Hey, you keep watching. We are.